I can hear you. Yeah, well, can you talk a little bit and we'll just start? You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Daily Dodge TV proudly presents Beaverdam High School Wrestling. And tonight, we've got a dandy of a dual match for you as the Stoughton Vikings are in town to take on your Beaverdam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the Fieldhouse. I'm joined by Beaverdam High School Athletic Director and former wrestling coach Ryan Gerber and Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, is our videographer and engineer for this broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's meet is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. And we welcome you into this broadcast, everyone, on a Friday night. Glad to have you aboard. Ryan Gerber, welcome once again to uh, Daily Dodge TV. Glad to have you back here, and uh, this should be a lot of fun tonight. Not only do we have Beaverdam taking on a perennial power in Stoughton, but it's senior night. It's, yeah, first of all, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks for having me back. This is exciting. Been looking forward to this uh, since uh, we put this one on the schedule, and and for me, this is exciting. Anytime you get Stoughton in the house and, 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 and set up for a duel, you know it's big. Stoughton's one of those blue blood programs that... Uh, if you're a D1 program, you you set your clock to your watch to you 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 see how good you are compared to how they are. This is one of the traditional powers in the state, uh, and it's what you measure yourself. So for a D1 coach, you know you aspire to to put up what Stoughton is. They they've had uh, they hold the, te uh, the the state record in, in state championships. You know they've done it. They've been there. This is going to be a good one. Now I hold in my hand here a <laughs> roster. Now I find it <laughs> ironic that it's senior night. Because when you look at the Beaver Dam roster, one thing you don't see of it, a lot of is seniors. Yeah. There's only four seniors, yeah. I believe, uh, on this roster. We talked about it last time we were here, but this Golden Beaver team is a very, very young squad. A lot of freshmen and sophomores, 
but they've been competing very well. In fact, I believe in conference, I think they're four and one in dual mm -hmm. meets. That's, that's outstanding for a team that's as young as they are. Right, right. They've positioned themselves early on uh, in a race for the conference title. Um, obviously, they got to get this one tonight, but uh, they went down to Milton early in the year. Unfortunately, it was the first duel of the year, um, <laughs> and uh, they got beat. Um, but things aren't out of question yet. Um, if they take care of business tonight and are fortunate enough to win, uh, they put themselves in a position to have a great day at the conference tournament uh, the first week in February down in Milton. And if they finish ahead of Milton at the conference tournament, they're going to take home a share of the conference title. So there's still a lot to wrestle for with this team. And like you said, a very young team, not very many upperclassmen. They're setting themselves up for success, not just this year, but in the years ahead. And that, for me, as an athletics director, having stepped away from the mat, it's pretty exciting uh, to watch these guys and see where they go. Well, what can you tell us about Stoughton, first of all? So Stoughton, like I said, Blue Blood program this is a team that is always strong. Even their down years are teams that are, are years that guys wish they had. Uh, they've got hammers on this team up and down the lineup. Um, and so it's a, it's a team that you know when you're, you're getting ready to wrestle them, you know they're going to come after you. They're going to be intense. They're going to be in shape. And they're going to be relentless. And so... Every time that we wrestled them, as a head coach, I was down in Fort Atkinson for many years, for those people that haven't heard that. Um, when, you, when you wrestle Stoughton, you know you're going to be in for a fight, and that's what makes it exciting. In, in wrestling, you want those tough physical matchups, and Stoughton always is, is ready to go. So I, I, expect, I expect a brawl tonight, and that's good, because for our kids, you want to be pushed. You want to be kind of punched in the mouth a little bit at the end of the year to get ready for that postseason run. So... Uh, Stoughton's a, 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 a great program historically and coached by two of the best head coaches in the state. Both of them are George Martin Hall of Fame um, uh, inductees, Bob Empey and Dan Spildy. Uh, great coaches, great wrestlers in their own right, and uh, they've been really what's kept this program going, by the way, along with some phenomenal talent uh, uh, over the years. Now, if you're Coach Winker of Beaver Dam, what do you tell the kids going into a match like this? So I don't want this to be coach speak. Oh, okay. But you, you, you do, in general, you, what yeah, do you tell? You, yeah. you, you do the best you can to make sure that this match isn't hyped up any more than any other match. Uh, and I know that's hard because of what it says on the, the uniform, but if you make this match any more important than an, a different match, say the MG one that we did on, on um, the Daily Dodge a few weeks ago, you're, you run the risk of guys getting tight and not okay. wrestling up. So what you want to do is just say, guys, we're going to focus on what we can handle, and that's how we wrestle. We want to be physical. We want to be aggressive. We want to take care of business on the mat. We want to wrestle six minutes. And, and so stay in your element. Do what's gotten you this far. Don't worry about what Stoughton puts out there. Um, it, it's really, at this point in the year, about focusing on what it is that you do well. Because if you start to worry about what everybody else does, you're going to have problems. And, and I don't think that's any different than any other sport. If you, if you do your business and take care of business, you're going to be just fine. Well, speaking of Coach Winker, we have a recorded interview with Coach Winker that we're going to play for you. But first, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll continue our pregame show. The pregame show, as always, is brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works. And again, we started early tonight because uh, during the pregame show tonight, we want to air the senior night tributes. And uh, so we're going to get to those as well. But right now, let's take a two-and-a-half-minute break. We're back in two and a half minutes for more on Daily Dodge TV. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime. A more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all area athletes. While at home watching or listening to your favorite sports team, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas in stock and ready for prompt delivery. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. 
It's time consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an auto owner's insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Happy New Year from our family to yours at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Now let's celebrate with the Start Something New sales event featuring $5,500 off Dodge Durango's. That's right, a brand new iconic six-passenger SUV for $40,700. For your Ram truck buyers, take $82.65 off Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance for 1.9%. By far the best truck deal in the market today. And of course, we can't forget Jeeps. Brand new Cherokee Latitude Lux 4x4s, $35,000. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. The Beaver Dam wrestling team is getting ready for Stoughton on Friday night at the BDHS Fieldhouse, a match you can watch on Daily Dodge TV thanks to Columbus Family Dental, hometown glass and improvement in the Beaver Dam Unified School District. We're going to bring in head coach Tim Winker. Coach, the Golden Beaver wrestling team have had a pretty good year. Just your thoughts on, on how it's gone so far. Uh, yeah, we're off to uh, a great uh, start in the conference. We're currently... Four and one, um, our only loss being to Milton. Um, we're something in four overall. I want to say it's like twelve and four overall as a team on duels. Um, came home with our first uh, tournament championship from uh, Brookfield Central a couple, a couple weeks ago. Um, really have a pretty good year with a with a really young squad. You know, we talked early in the year, and you talked about having a young squad, but uh, your wrestlers have come in and uh, they've really performed, haven't they? Even though they may be youth youth on paper. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a lot of high school experience, but they have a lot of wrestling experience. And at the end of the day, you're going to walk onto the mat, you're going to shake hands, and there's going to be a guy with a whistle. Um, so regardless of you know when those matches have come, just kind of understanding where. Uh, you know how to wrestle and how to wrestle and maybe more important matches is, is just crucial regardless of what grade they're in. And you know your program, we've seen the rise in your program here over the last few years. You know, making making steps. It seems like every year. How big was it this year now to be able to put some trophies in trophy cases that show the kids, hey, look at all this hard work, it's paying off. And we're you know you look at the standings on track wrestling and you see Beaver Dam number one at an event. Um, you know, it's always good because you're always trying to convince kids that all of the hard work is worth it. Um, and that especially, so it's, it's really tough with wrestling as, you know, you're physically beating each other up in practice. Um, and if you're not seeing the results either individually or as a team out on the mat, it's tough to continue to convince yourself to, to push yourself to that level. Um, so the fact that we're able to um, see a little bit more of that success in dual meets and in tournaments um, both individually and as a team, is it really helps kids kind of solidify like we're in this together, we're making progress, like believe in ourselves and believe in the system that we're that we're following. Coach, you had a match earlier this, I guess it'd be this year even. Uh, you went down to the final match and uh, you needed a pin to win, and Easton Warden got that pin. Can you kind of talk about what that's like uh, being out on the mat, knowing you have to have to get you know six points or whatever it is to uh, to, to win a match, and what that feels like out there, and to get that done, how big it is. Oh, I mean, it, that's a huge accomplishment because it's obviously it's always tough to get a pin in a wrestling match. It's the ultimate goal. Um, but when the other guy knows that all they have to do is not get pinned, they can wrestle a little bit differently. They can wrestle very passive. They're very um, really sticking to make sure they're in good position, not get themselves overextended versus in a normal match. If nothing's really, I mean, it's just in the middle of a duel, a kid might still be trying to, you know, be more aggressive. And when you're more aggressive, you're likely to make more mistakes. Um, but that, you know, Watertown's kid walked out there and he knew exactly what he had to do. He just could not get pinned. Um, and for the better part of two periods, he did a great job of it. I think it was like 11 to 1 going into the third period. And, you know, as coaches, we were worried if he, uh, if Easton gets out to a 15 point lead, well, the match is over. It's a tech fall. And we ended up tying and would have been, uh, we would have lost the, the dual meet on criteria. So, um, 
both kids, I thought, went out there and you know wrestled to the best of their ability to try and accomplish the goal for the team. Um, Easton just was able to get a cradle locked up in that third period and got it tight and got the got the fall in the third period for the team win. We talked about your youth coach and your guys, you know, your I should your wrestlers, I should say, uh, you know, performing. What what else have you liked about your wrestling team here in twenty twenty two twenty three? I think the growth that I've seen from beginning to end. Um, like every kid on varsity or JV, I can think of a time where I've had a conversation with them, um, either about like technique that they can improve on or the, the part that I usually like the most is mentally what can they do to improve. Um, certainly there's always physical limitations. Like if you're just undersized or not as strong as your opponents, that's one thing. But everybody's got a, got a, a mind and a brain, and if we can sharpen that and we can use that to our advantage and gain an advantage over our opponents with that, that's someone that, something that anyone can do with. But it's, it's probably the hardest thing to do because it, as easy as it might say, just think this way or think another way, like you actually get out on the mat. It's, it's tough to keep your mind positive. It's tough to keep your mind always on your side and putting yourself in the best position to win. Coach Stoughton on Friday night, you say Stoughton and people across the state in Wisconsin wrestling you know, know about their program and their storied history that they have. Just uh, what's the scouting report on this year's version of that squad? Um, Stoughton's not the, uh, the team state caliber team that they have been in previous years, um, but I guarantee anybody that looks at that uh, lineup and knows – wrestling in the state of Wisconsin. There's still a number of names on that lineup that um, are going to be down at the state tournament, probably on the podium at the end of the year. Um, and when you have that kind of kids in your practice room, you're bound to bring the uh, the rest of your team up with you. So, so it's still a team that can't be overlooked. They still have some very good wrestlers. Um, they just don't have the depth that they probably had in previous years. Coach Tim Winker, I appreciate the time. And again, uh, Daily Dodge TV, Ryan Gerber and Mike Tronson will have the call on Friday night. I appreciate the time. It should be a fun match on Daily Dodge Television. All right. Thank you. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And we continue the John Deere pregame show at Beaverdam High School's Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson, Ryan Gerber. We are ringside for this dual meet between Beaverdam and Stoughton. It's high school wrestling tonight. And as I mentioned earlier, it's senior night, and we want to air the senior tributes. And so we're going to keep it right here during our extended John Deere pregame show for some senior tributes that will be beginning shortly. And, of course, the start of the match just a few minutes away as well. We're glad you're with us tonight. And uh, I know we've got wrestling tonight, Ryan, but uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of things. And starting with uh, the boys' hockey team with a humongous win last night, 5-3 to three over Wanakee on the road and uh, I tell you what, as, as good as the team has been this year and actually the last couple of years, that, uh, I told you off the air, that's a statement. That's a signature win over a really good team, and they finally got over the hump, and hats off to Doug Kraft and his staff and his players. Yeah, Coach Kraft, I talked to him uh, before the game last night and then again today. Six years it's been since the Beavers have knocked him off. This is huge, and again, just like the wrestling program, that win right there, as long as they take care of business in their next two conference matches or uh, uh, games, it puts them in a position to get a share of that conference title, which they've never won, from what I understand, in program history. So 
big things happening here in the in the winter. And then the other thing, I, I hope you're ready to go. You had a long night last <laughs> night. Uh, I, I was able to watch that at home because we you guys were on the road. Big night last night. Unfortunately, didn't work our, our way, but still a great game. Boy, the Beaver Dam uh, girls basketball team, boy, the Golden Beavers played their hearts out last night on the road at Monona Grove. It was a battle of uh, the Titans, a clash yeah. of the Titans, we called it. And it went to overtime, and uh, Beaver Dam fell 65-58 in overtime. But what a heck of a game. I see Coach Winker heading to the uh, the microphone. I think we're going to start our senior night tribute here. So let's, uh, we're, again, we'll keep it right here, and we'll get our tribute going here with uh, Coach Winker on senior night 2023. And we have uh, several players to be honored, and it looks, uh, we have a couple managers, couple too, managers, I believe, that are yeah. our seniors. And, of course, we... Uh, we always like to air this, you know, when we're when we're in the gym. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Go. Welcome to our Beaver Dam Duel versus Shelton tonight. Being the last home duel of the year, it is senior night, and we want to make sure we take the time to celebrate our seniors as part of our program. Uh, we have four wrestlers and two managers this year that are seniors. We're going to start off with Isabel Dewitt. She has been wrestling for two years. Uh, she came back to us after wrestling in eighth grade to come back and wrestle as a senior. Um, Isabel's plan for the future. She plans to take a gap year to travel around the world to see her family. Then she wants to go to school to either be an English or phi ed teacher. But, if all else, she's going to try and go into commercial real estate. Her favorite wrestling memory from uh, this year is actually getting third place at her second tournament of the season after not wrestling for four years, and she beat the twin of the girl who had just beaten her earlier in the day. Uh, they looked the same, so she said it felt like getting revenge. Um, getting to know Isabel, oh, hold on, I got more nice things to say about her. Uh, getting to know Isabel this year, she's a very excellent, kind-hearted young lady. Um, she stands up with any other guys in the practice room. I'm very proud of our effort and tenacity. Uh, she wants to be held to the same standard and treated as an equal in a practice room, and she lives up to that. Uh, she's a very positive representative to me. She's a very positive representative of the growth of girls wrestling in Wisconsin and in the U.S. So, thank you, Isabel. <laughs> Next is Rolando Trevino. Rolando has been wrestling for two years. He would like to pursue a uh, welding career in the future, and his favorite wrestling memory is the adrenaline he felt in his first match. So, two years ago, and this was the year after uh, our whole COVID issue, um, this kid, little short Hispanic kid, comes up to me in the hallway after class and is like, hey, Mr. Winker, do you think I'd be good at wrestling? And I looked him dead in the eye like, absolutely, I think you'd be great. And we get him out for wrestling, and uh, towards the end of the year, I'm like, hey, Rolando, did you actually know you'd be good at wrestling? And he's like, you know, you said, you said I'd be good, so I, I thought I'd be really good. I'm like, I lied. I had no idea how good he would be, but you know what? You can always take a 106-pound kid in the wrestling room. Um, so that was my first experience uh, meeting Rolando. Um, very grateful. He took a chance to come up to a teacher that I actually only knew him from the COVID year uh, as a little letter on my screen during class as he was a virtual student. Um, but I guess from that, he, uh, he felt that he had enough uh, chemistry with me to, to give wrestling a try. Um, in just two years, he's shown a uh, tremendous growth in the sport of wrestling. Uh, very hard working kid, uh, great teammate to all of our wrestlers. And he won't ever tell you this, but Rolando's got the voice of an angel. We've been trying to get him to sing the national anthem, but uh, he's just too shy to go out there and do it in public, but man's got a great singing voice, just doesn't want to share it with the world. Thank you, Rolando. Grace Pekarski has been a manager for four years. She plans to attend UW-Milwaukee to major in criminal justice. Her favorite memory is going, uh, traveling with us to state her freshman year. Uh, Grace is a fantastic organizer. Um, she does a great job helping with locker signs each week for our wrestlers. Um, at the beginning of the year, setting up our equipment bags, making sure we have iPads, um, handing out equipment. Just does a great job keeping everything organized. Um, she helped uh, put managers under her wing this year, a bunch of new girls, and she did a great job helping them learn the ropes. 
um, and she's been very dedicated to the program um, and has been a part of our growth over the past four years. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> Alyssa Wellness has also been a manager for four years. Next year, she's planning on going to Carthage and getting her degree in nursing. Uh, her favorite wrestling memory is going to watch State last year. Um, Alyssa has great leadership for many of our young managers. Uh, she's dependable to get our, uh, to help us set up for duels and tournaments, um, and also has been very dependable for helping us with our youth tournaments in the last three years. Uh, she's been very dedicated to the program last year. Uh, I'm very grateful to have her as a part of it. Thank you, Alyssa. Tom Putz Hittner has been wrestling for 10 years. Um, next year he plans to get a part-time job at a welding company and he is hoping to save money from working as a welder to be able to go to a school for blacksmithing. Um, his favorite memories from 8th grade when he was at Montello High, uh, Middle School. Um, his middle school practice is over and he wanted to come practice to high school. Um, they were running sprints and he was actually passing the varsity wrestling. Coach was very impressed and was excited to have him on the team as a freshman. However, Tom had a change of plans. He ended up moving to Beaver Dam as a sophomore, and we've been very thankful to have him here since. Um, he's thankful for the uh, Beaver Dam and Montello coaches for helping him get better at wrestling, and as well as uh, our coaching staff for helping to feel welcome here at Beaver Dam. Um, as you mentioned, Tom came to us as a sophomore during our COVID year. Um, for those of you with a, uh, a little bit of memory from that year, we had 14 wrestlers and still 13 weights. Um, so Tom kind of got thrown into a varsity lineup that didn't have a whole lot of depth. Um, but we had guys that were willing to go out there and battle every night. Um, unfortunately, Tom missed his uh, junior year wrestling because he was still uh, recovering from a concussion from football. Um, but it speaks to the type of very aggressive um, football player as well as wrestler that Tom is. Um, just very aggressive in practice and at events. He's an extremely hard worker, and uh, I'm very proud of the growth that we've seen in Tom over the last three years. And last but not least, Keegan Jacobs. Keegan has been wrestling for 13 years. He plans on joining the U.S. Army as a construction equipment repairer next year. And his favorite memory was from last year when we went down to Soton and uh, won the duel there, as well as winning a regional title last year as team. I remember Keegan when he was in first grade coming to his practices. The growth from Keegan in youth wrestling through middle school and to now as a senior has been tremendous. Um, nobody would have believed seeing that kid in first grade crying after he got dropped on his shoulder at practice would turn out to be um, a high quality varsity contributing senior that you see before you today. Um, Keegan has become a team leader um, as part of this team. He's just the confidence that wrestling has put into Keegan is, is immeasurable. Um, Keegan has always done whatever he can for the team. Last year, weighing at 195.1 pounds, we were wrestling him up at heavyweight just to fill a spot. Um, I can't tell you how many times he had to drink water to make sure that he was over 195 so that he could wrestle at heavyweight for us. Um, it's just kind of the dedication that Keegan has had for this team. Um, Keegan has won countless big matches for us in the past two years to help us win duels. And as the only wrestler that's been with us for all four years, um, he has helped to build this program to where we are. Um, again, a little bit of memory of where we started four or five years ago, um, the growth that this team has made, um, and all the time that Keegan and the other seniors have put in to help build that. Um, I'm just very great, uh, grateful and thankful for the time that they, we've had with them, um, and thank you for all their commitment and dedication. So, from the entire Beaver Dam community, thank you, seniors. And there you have it, Coach Tim Winker with our Beaver Dam High School Wrestling Senior Night Tributes. And uh, right now, a little photo op with Benjamin Beaver down there on the map. 
This is the John Deere pregame show. We've got a dual meet coming up between Beaverdam and Stoughton. Right now, we'll step aside. We're back right after this timeout on Daily Dodge TV. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquesan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ergobank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Laissez le bon temps rouler. It's a Mardi Gras thing, and it means let the good times roll. At Great Harvest, we're rolling out the Mardi Gras king cake. Baked fresh, decorated in Mardi Gras colors, and the figure of a little baby. It's a Mardi Gras thing. Find the baby, and the next party's on you. So roll into Great Harvest, and roll out with Mardi Gras' sweetest tradition. Great Harvest. Bread, the way it ought to be. Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 East of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthinds.com, search by Beaver Dam and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. Happy New Year from our family to yours at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Now let's celebrate with the Start Something New sales event featuring $5,500 off Dodge Durango's. That's right, a brand new iconic six-passenger SUV for $40,700. For your Ram truck buyers, take $8,265 off Bighorn Crew cabs and finance for 1.9%. By far the best truck deal in the market today. And of course, we can't forget Jeeps. Brand new Cherokee Latitude Lux 4x4s, $35 grand. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. We continue the John Deere pregame show inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson, Ryan Gerber with you. The lights are dimmed as they're getting ready to get this wrestling dual meet underway between the Stoughton Vikings and the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Tonight's game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement and the Beaverdam Unified School District. 
Tonight's game is also, or match is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, and we'll pause now for the national anthem. Our national anthem here at the BDHS Fieldhouse. Let's take another quick break. Back for the start of the match right after this on Daily Dodge TV. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an auto owner's insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Happy New Year from our family to yours at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Now let's celebrate with the Start Something New sales event featuring $5,500 off Dodge Durango's. That's right, a brand new iconic six-passenger SUV for $40,700. For your Ram truck buyers, take $82.65 off Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance for 1.9%. By far the best truck deal in the market today. And of course, we can't forget Jeeps. Brand new Cherokee Latitude Lux 4x4s, $35,000. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. Air Care's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And once again, we thank John Deere Horicon Works for sponsoring our pregame show. Mike Tronson alongside Beaver Dam High School Athletic Director and former wrestling coach Ryan Gerber. Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, is our on-site videographer and engineer. And again, we thank you for being with us for Beaver Dam High School wrestling the Golden Beavers tonight in a dual meet against Stoughton. The wrestlers being introduced right now. And uh, Ryan, they're going to start at the 182 weight class tonight. Starting with the big boys tonight. It's going to get, uh, you're going to see some good wrestling throughout tonight. You're going to see some really high ranked wrestlers throughout uh, tonight as well. So starting at 82, uh, we'll be progressing 82, 95, 220 heavyweight, and then we'll head back down to the lightweights. Uh, we were kind of talking about that at, at the beginning off air. If you're not aware, typically uh, you, you would start a tournament 106, lightest weight, going all the way up to the heavyweight match with we, with duels here. It's a, a random draw that's a, a signed 
during the weigh-in. So going 82 first tonight, and then heading up to the big boys, coming all the way back down to the lightweights. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for their active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam, better together. And uh, we're just about ready to get this meet underway. And if I could just say before we get started here, they talked about it here in the gym, but uh, as you're watching at home, if, if you're watching the wrestling and you're, you're, you're watching the officiating and you're saying, geez, what kind of call is that or whatnot? Hey, I encourage you to stop in and see me on Monday. We, we're looking for more officials. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that have experienced uh, wrestling or coaching that are, are at home um, or they're up in the stands. We need officials. We're running out of officials. Um, and our sport of wrestling particularly needs officials. So uh, this sport doesn't happen without officials. So if you're at home thinking you can do better or thinking you might want to put the stripes on and help the sport continue to grow, come see me. You know where my office is. is right in front uh, of the main office. We'll get you signed up with the WIA, and you're going to help the sport. Yeah, boy, we, we need officials in all sports. But, yeah, wrestling for sure. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we can't say that... Uh, you know, we can't say, stress it enough that, uh, you know, we, we need you, you folks out there. If you have any inkling at all, now's the time. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, we'd hate to see it get to the point where matches aren't held because of, you know, lack of officials. And unfortunately, I know in other sports, in, in other areas or other states, that has happened yeah. in, in some cases. And, and that's just a shame because, you know, we want, we want to have opportunities for, for our young people. Uh, Ralph Loebner, who's out there, I've uh, known him for quite a while, uh, originally from the Wisconsin Rapids area of the state and uh, now lives in DeForest. Uh, he told me tonight he's in his 49th year of officiating. Wow. 49th year. And, and I said, well, man, you got to come back next year to get number 50. And he said, yeah. And I don't know how much after that. And, and I, I think that's a story. We have a lot of guys that are, are sticking around and officiating that, that may have transitioned out uh, a little bit earlier but are sticking around to help our sport so um we need you if you're out there uh and i know um there's a lot of people that typically are in the stands that think they could do pretty good so i i encourage you come see me we'll get you signed up and by the way if you're a high school athlete you can become a licensed official for free the WI will take that, so that helps out youth tournaments on the on the weekends. That even helps some of the summer. Great stuff. experience at a young age. My and, goodness, and by the way, making some start. money. And if you're a college athlete, great opportunity to make some money. You could be working five nights a week in in wrestling Saturday and Sunday if you want. So, um, great opportunity. So it's Beaver Dam and it's Stoughton, and we start at the 182 weight class. And Ryan, what can you tell us about our first two wrestlers tonight? Well, actually, I'm going to hold off here because there's going to be a little gamesmanship possible oh, play okay. here to see who okay. uh, who gets announced. And that's the one thing that you see in dual meets. Uh, these lineups do get announced, but a lot of it is dependent on, on different things. Um, okay. So based on who reports, and as you can see, Stoughton's reporting first, and and what that means is, if you're paying attention to what was going on uh, pre-match, there's a coin flip to see uh, what you get odds or evens. If your side gets their um, flip right, then that's when you report. So uh, obviously, uh, Stoughton has odds, Beaver Dam has the even, so Stoughton has to report to the table first. And once you report to the table, that locks in your wrestler, gives the advantage to the other team to see who they're sending out, and you can adjust. So a little bit of... Yep. Yeah, and so this is kind of what I I've, I've figured. Uh, Remington deals from Beaver Dam, Brandon Hold uh, from Stoughton uh, taken off here in our first match. A lot of nice little hand fighting going on early, and you're going to see this a lot from Stoughton, um, especially in the upper weights, but they love to get to their um, two-on-ones. They love to hand fight in there, um, get on the inside position and enforce the issue here. A little shot there from Remington. Doesn't want to be there. That's throw territory. You can see a little bit there. Um, Brandon went for a throw there. So you don't want to be caught in a position for a head steal or, or any kind of throw uh, because that can end your night pretty quick. So he wants to get out of this collar tie. Collar tie is just when the guy locks on the, the neck there and kind of holds on, and, and you don't want to be there. You don't want to be in a situation where your, your head is uh, ear to ear, as they would say. So 
Uh, what, what Remington wants to do is get on inside position, but he doesn't want to get locked and tight. And you can see he's working those wrists to try to open something up. There he takes a shot. Head down, but he recovers. Lifts. Takes him down for two. Nice job, Remington. As you can hear Coach Winker, he's screaming from the sideline, looking for a half, trying to get to a turn right away. Um, Stoughton, Stoughton kids are pretty tough, and they're well coached. You're not going to get a, a, a cheap turn real quick there. So... Uh, Bottom man here is working up to his base, doing a real nice job. Uh, we're a little high here. You can see we're, we're, uh, our chest, the Beaver Dam wrestler's chest, is a little bit out front. We want to be, uh, we want our weight centered on the center of, of the Stoughton wrestler's back. And whoop, Ralph missed the locked hands there. He still got him locked. He's missed the the locked hands. And now it looks like he switched to a wrist on top. Remember, for those of you that uh, checked in with us at MG. Uh, match. Remember, the top wrestler cannot lock his hands from the top position once the takedown's been given, unless it's in a uh, in a uh, pinning combination. We're going with that butcher. We saw that a ton in the MG match. He's got to return back to the back. He's a little bit too out front here, um, getting himself out of position, hanging his head a little bit. Good first period for Remington and Beaver Dam feel like the Micro Machine Man a little bit after that first period. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta you slow down a little bit. You mentioned a little bit about uh, centering the weight. Is that where you get into trouble if you're not right. kind of so, centered there a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. When, when you're in the top position, you want the middle of your chest on the middle of his back. What that does is it provides uh, balance for you on the top, but it also maximizes the amount of weight that you're keeping on the bottom man. Um, make no mistake, there's all this technique out there, but it's about dominating your, your opponent and um, making life miserable for them when they're down in that position. So we're back to our feet. Um, Beaver Dam got the choice there. Top, bottom, neutral, or defer um, were the choices. Uh, instead of going back down to the mat, which is where we finished the first period, we chose to go neutral. Um, now we're in a, a kind of in an underhook position. Gets to an outside single there. He's got to keep circling here. Make sure, get to the corner. Uh, Stoughton's got a, a, a ni nice pressure on the head. It looks like he's working a, a, trying to work a quarter Nelson there, but he doesn't have a hook. Here comes Deals. This is where he finished last time. Nice lifts. He's got to keep that arm, switch to a half. Uh, Stoughton wrestler did a nice job belling out, prevent, uh, prevent the turn there. A couple of good lifts now we've seen in this match from him. You know, I really like, I really like that. He, he's taken shots that, I, you know, admittedly could be a little bit stronger, uh, but he's recovering very well. And he's finishing by using the, those legs, the, his, those big, big muscles to lift and explode through. And if, if Coach Lindy's watching this, I know he is because I'm, I heard it after the last one. You got to love it when, a, when one of uh, the, the kids picks, in, picks a kid up and drives him to the mat. That's uh, textbook uh, tackle all day long. You like that as a coach, with seeing the aggressiveness like that? going you know, Absolutely. Like that? Yeah. Absolutely. You want to be explosive and you want to be physical and you want to set the tone. Um, you want to let them know, look, the longer you stay on the mat, you're going to have a rough time with me. So anytime you can explode and be physical uh, on, in your, your technique, the better. We did get a turn there. Uh, looks like we got three near fall points there for exposing the, the bottom wrestler uh, past 90 degrees uh, for a five count there. So 7-0 uh, going into the third period. That's pretty good. Outstanding first two periods there for Remington. Uh, you yeah, very aggressive, as you said, and, uh, you know, it's, it, I, I suppose, I mean, in any match, really, but especially on a night like tonight, you've got Stoughton in here. Uh, set the tone early, and that, you know, that can go a long way for, uh, you know, the confidence of the entire team. Absolutely. Now, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, interesting here, Stoughton had choice, and they choose, chose a top position, a very interesting position. You only choose this if you have a kid that you really believe can get a turn. They're down 7 to nothing. They haven't been able to get away. They haven't been able to get a uh, takedown, so choose top. That didn't work out for him. Got it. Beaver Dam got the escape. So now he's up eight to nothing. And what that does is it means that right now, if the match ended at this moment, he'd have a major decision. Remember, a decision of seven points or less on the scoreboard means three team points. A major decision, which is eight points up to fourteen, is four points. And in a match like this, that could be tight, uh, late. Any of those bonus points you can get is huge. Um, so right now. Um, Beaver Dam, obviously you want to stay aggressive here. You'd love to get a takedown. You always love to finish periods and matches, getting a takedown and being in the top position, in the dominant position. But at a minimum, 
you don't want to give up the major. You don't want to give up a takedown. You don't want to give up anything. And, and there's a good shot by Stoughton. Good shot defense. What he needs to do is take the right hand and push the head down, and he'd have a takedown. You can see he draped it over the torso there, and, and that's how Stoughton was able to come out of there without giving up a takedown. If All he had to do is stuff that head. It's kind of like how they teach in youth football. If your head's up when you tackle, you're going to get the tackle. If your head's down, you're going to stay down. In wrestling, it's not that much different. You, you get in a, a sprawl position like that, and you stuff that head and keep it tight to the mat, that kid's staying down. It's a nice hand fighting here. I can see Benny the Beavers uh, staying in his athletic position in the, <laughs> the corner. He's getting into it. Here's shot defense. We gotta, he got to recover there. He kind of got sloppy there, but hey, got the takedown. 17 seconds to go, up 10 to nothing. Keeps a major decision in place here. And uh, this, is, this is where you want to finish. Now, again, he's getting a little high, a little out of position. I, so coach, this makes you a little bit nervous. But looks like he's going to get the ride out. Nice 10 nothing win here. Yeah, it's a great way to start the match if you're the uh, Golden Beavers. And Remington with the, uh, the major decision and a, a couple of... Uh, you know, he was very aggressive. He had a, a couple of uh, lifts, and he had that nice escape, and, and I tell you, he did really well. Absolutely. Anytime that you can come out early in a match and get a, a nice physical takedown and drive that opponent into the mat, you set the tone. And he out-hustled him, he outworked him, he out physical him in that match, and that's really nice to see. Now, I can tell you, as, you, as I look over across the uh, gym, Coach Spildy's firing up his guys. You know, they're going to remember that one. They're going to come back tough here uh, in the next couple weights. So um, Stone's going to counter punch. You know that coming into this. Wink, Coach Winker knows that's going to come. Um, so th like I said, this at the beginning, this is going to be a battle uh, from start to finish. Uh, expect Stoughton to counter punch. Hey, if you'd like to send us an email during the match tonight, you can do that at sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. So 195. Um, Waylon and uh, Jake, uh, Waylon and Jacobs out there. Double leg attempt here. We're kind of caught out of position a little bit. Both guys are are, are fighting to stay in there. Stoughton, you know, they have the double leg, but he's on a hip here. Beaver Dam's got uh, a lock through the leg there that prevented any movement there. If you if you can't move your legs, it's hard to score, uh, and that's exactly what happened here. And sometimes when I've coached guys when. Uh, the resident from Stoughton is kind of tall. You, you start coaching these taller guys, and, and, and it gets to be a little bit difficult because, you know, it's harder to get your body all the way around. Nice, strong a shot there, but he went to his hips, and he, and he lost all of his power. As soon as he went to his hips there, lost all his power. Now we're still laying on his hips. We've got a cross face. We need to get behind. There's two for a takedown right into a cradle attempt. He's beer dance pulling that back. Near fall. We're getting near fall. Two near fall uh, by the official there. Wrestling tough on top. You can see the top man. He's driving with his toes, putting maximum effort. This is what we were talking about earlier, making sure your, your chest, middle of your chest is in the middle of your back to put pressure. Got a little bit high on this half Nelson. Almost got rolled there. But he's looking for that pin. He's got to stay in bounds. That's tight. That is tight. Our hips are a little up, and the toe got the toe got dragged onto that uh, circle. The call out of bounds. He did get the three near fall. He's up seven nothing, so a, a heck of a start. Yeah, that's tough as a coach. You have uh, your opponent in in pinning position there. You have a tight, tight half. Just his hips got a little bit high. When you're in that pinning position, you want to get your hips to the mat. You don't want your hips up like a tent. You want them down to the mat. And what that does is it, it makes your lower body that much heavier to roll. All right, if you, if you kind of think about it in, in, in terms of leverage, you want to get your hips down, makes you heavier. Here, he's got a nice tight half again. Came right back to it. He's got to get his chest back a little bit more to shift his weight. Stoughton Russell is going to kind of help him out here by rolling. He's got to get his hips down. What did I say just a second ago? Can't have your hips up like a tent. He's going to get three near fall. So at the end of the first, he's up 10 nothing. And you were talking a little bit, uh, I think we talked about this last time we were here broadcasting, Ryan, but um, is it, I mean, a little bit different 
uh, technique or strategy when you got some taller or lankier mm -hmm. guys out there versus some of the shorter statured uh, grapplers? Yeah, so, th you know, the, there's there's differences all throughout the lineup. L lighter weights are going to wrestle different than middle weights. Middle weights are going to wrestle different than the upper weights. And then there are body size differences. You know, taller, lankier wrestlers have different advantages than the rest of us. Those of us with short arms uh, <laughs> don't have those advantages. Now, this goes back to Stoughton had a choice here in the second period. They chose to ride. Um, thinking maybe they could get a turn. Anytime a tall, lanky guy like this chooses to, to ride and the reversal, almost a, I guess a defensive pin there gets, gets the pin. Well, a spectacular start for Beaver Dam. They get a major decision and now a pin by one of our seniors, Keegan Jacobs at 195. It's a great start. Yeah, uh, so team score now 10-0, 10-0 and, and you know, and again, um, so Stoughton has got two hammers coming back to back here uh, in Beckett's building, Griff, Griffin MP. Um, so these are going to be two tough, tough, tough matchups for, for the Beaver, uh, the Golden Beavers here. But, you know, this is, this is what you live for as a competitor. This is where you want to go out and wrestle against the best. Again, if you'd like to send an email to us, uh, let us know you're watching tonight. Sports at DailyDodge.com. Sports at DailyDodge.com. You can send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. Maybe you'd like to say hello to Ryan Gerber. <laughs> we, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We always make our broadcasts interactive and fun. And uh, you're with us on Senior Night 2023 here in the Lodge. Yeah. I got, uh, I got some people at home watching tonight, including my, uh, my son's watching. I'm hoping he's uh, picking up my voice on the, the TV. So um, it's good to know the Ryan Gerber <laughs> fan club is alive and well. <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's a fan club, but... <laughs> I'd pledge to that club. I appreciate that. So again, Beckett Spilde here. He's a he's a, he's a hammer here. He's he's had a really nice season so far. He was tough when we wrestled him last year as a, as a sophomore. Um, you know, another great Spilde in, in the line. Um, Thirty seconds into the match, he's put put the uh, put his opponent on on his back here. It's a tough matchup. Yeah, Beckett's 20, 28 and five on the season. Um, and, and I'll tell you this about Stoughton, this is partially what makes them so great. They wrestle a tough, tough, tough schedule. Um, for those in the wrestling know, uh, this is their stretch of three matches in a row. They, they hosted the Badger State Invite, which is one of the top tournaments in the state. They follow that up a couple days later at the Bi-State, and then a week later they have the Cheesehead, which is a nationally ranked tournament. So, you know, their record's coming in. They may have five or six losses, but that is a legit. Uh, record. So, you know, you want to be the best, you got to compete against the best, and Stoughton's always done that. Well, that was a quick match uh, for uh, for the 220 weight class, and uh, Beckett uh, didn't take too long there. He, he dominated. Yep, and, and here comes Griffin Empey, um, Coach Empey's son, a um, uh, standout offensive lineman and, and a standout wrestler across the state uh, for the last several years. Uh, burst on the scene as a freshman a few years ago. Um, so this is another hammer in their lineup that is a, is a tough matchup for the Golden Beavers. The last match that was a win by fall, they said yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 10-6, Empey with a nice snap down there. Um, obviously taller with leverage, strong. Uh, takes that uh, outside shoulder, was looking with um, just a, a leg lift. It was kind of a leg turkey, gave up on it, but stays with, uh, stays with the um, headlock here. And, um, Again, tough matchup, 23 seconds. Um, Griffin's done that to a lot of people <laughs> over the years. Well, just like that, on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Stoughton vaults into the lead. Yeah. And, 12 to 10. And, and, you know, we all knew uh, coming in that at 220 and heavyweight, two of the better wrestlers in the state, those were going to be tough matchups. Um, so, again, kind of mentioned it. Stoughton has a collection of hammers on the team. Those were two of them. You got to weather that storm and and win in the match, the those other matches. And and Beaverdam's been successful in the two matches outside. So here you go. You got a forfeit at 106. Beaverdam jumps back out in the lead, 16 to 12. And now we go to 113. Senior Rolando Trevino is coming out. 
on senior night, of course. He's typically the 106 pounder, but he's wrestling up tonight to get a match. And and uh, I talked to Rolando this week. He's one of our runners in the office. And I said, hey, you know, Rolando, it's senior night at Stoughton. It's time to step up. We're looking bonus points this week. So um, excited to see what Rolando does tonight. Um, Coach Winker had a nice story. If you were watching the uh, the John Deere pregame show during the senior night tributes about uh, how he uh, first came in touch with Rolando and how he... Uh, came out for wrestling and didn't know if he'd be any good and uh, well I think he's proven that he's pretty good. Oh yeah and you know keep in mind he's typically their 106 pounder. You have a senior at 106 pounds. What a, I, I mentioned that again. It doesn't happen too often. No does it? it doesn't happen at all. What a weapon that is and uh, Rolando's a talented kid and you know he's he's wrestling up a little bit tonight um, but you know it's senior night and you expect your seniors in big matches to step up and, and to take on some of those roles. Uh, both guys scrapping there on the mat. As you can see already, what the difference between lightweight wrestling yep. and upperweight wrestling is, is. It's a little bit quicker pace, a little bit more agile. Um, I would say there's an art to upperweight wrestling too, so let's not be totally dismissive <laughs> there. Uh, nice shot by Rolando, but he's got to square up here. Uh, Stone's doing a great job in their shot defense here. Uh, stuffing that head, getting in the front headlock, and then finishing with an underhook to get back to our feet here. You can see Stoughton here... Um, both guys are, are trading uh, risk control here. Um, Rolando, you do not shoot with one hand. Oof, that could a little risky tough. move there, wasn't it? That's tough. You, you, if you're going to take a shot, you got to commit. Don't shoot halfway. Don't shoot reaching and keeping your head up because that, that's throw territory all day long. Now, we're, we're, Rolando's, you know, he's, he's got to open this guy up. There's a, there's a little nice little duck. Little nice, nice little duck under there for two on the edge of the mat. Looks like he's got a cradle there locked up. He's going to pull him all the way over. We're getting near fall. He's got that tight. If he brings his elbows tighter together, but it didn't matter. Uh, he gets the fall. Nice job, Rolando, on senior night. That's one he'll remember for a long time. Memorable. Getting the win on senior night. Senior night is, as a coach, you know, and I'm sure it's this way in every sport, but it's it's one of the most anticipated nights of the year, and it's also the hardest night of the year. You, you got these guys that come out and compete for you for four years, and, and some of them even more if you're involved in your youth organization. And, and this is the last one. This is the last time they're going to step on their mat with their uniform. And so it's, a, it's an emotional night. You want to see them go out on a high note, and it's really nice to see he was able to get not only a win but a pin. Um, right. to put his team in position up 10, uh, what, six matches into the duel. And there's, you know, so few dual meets, home meets as it is, so you got to savor every one, and that'll be extra special for him. Yeah, absolutely. On to 120. 22 to 12, Beaver Dam leads Stoughton on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Yeah, so Grayson, uh, typically the 113 pounder, but he's wrestling up again. We're just we're bumping guys up a little bit to fill the lineup um, a little bit strategically. Wrestling Hartburg. Uh, Harlberg from uh, Stoughton here. You can see Kevin. Kevin and I, I really like watching this guy wrestle. He is tenacious. He gets after it. You can see another oh, single wow. to a double lift back down. Again, setting the tone, being physical, going right into that cross face into a butcher. Looking, looking maybe to reach underneath to go full butcher here. I think he could probably get a, a cross face cradle there if he knocks him back down to a hip. But this is another one of uh, Coach... Oh, Leg Turk there. Leg Turk coming. Keep lifting that leg. He's got it kind of hooked. That leg he's got hooked there. He's a little below the, the knee there, so he doesn't have leverage on that leg. If he can get above the knee and lift that leg, he's going to turn those hips and make this turn a little bit easier. But he's a little bit low, a little bit loose on that hip. That's just called a leg Turk. Um, we did that a lot in Fort. Stoughton has had their years of doing that a lot. So... Um, Good technique that you see not only at the high school level, but you see it at the collegiate level at times. Now they're off the mat. So again, uh, Grayson, uh, one of the fantastic freshmen that Coach Winker has at his disposal. And, you know, you watch him here in this match. Again, he's under the, the, under the spotlight in front of a big crowd in a big match. You wouldn't tell. Look at that nice physical return. Kept that arm, brought brought his opponent back to the mat. Now he's got a, an arm bar here. He's trying to cinch it up tight. Um, if he can get that arm bar and pin that shoulder, that uh, right shoulder down, he's going to get a turn. 
but he's got to hurry up. He's got 24 seconds. He's going to switch directions here. Try to get a, a, a chin hook, but not to be. Kid from Stone is doing a really nice job defending underneath. Getting back up to his feet. You see there that uh, Grayson's got that ankle hook. That's a, a great break. Um, what great way to slow a guy down if you can hook that ankle and, and hold it tight. It, you know, you try standing up and someone's got your ankle hook. It's not real easy. <laughs> I have trouble standing up and nobody's got a hold of my ankle, <laughs> let, alone, let alone on the mat. I get you. Grayson's going to uh, get choice here and he's going to choose down. And that's the right choice. Uh, he's up two to nothing. Tight, tight match here. Um, you want a chance to get points. So look at that. See, now this is, we talked about this earlier about being in the top position and getting out of position. Kid from Stoughton got a little bit out of position there. Grayson just kind of sat in, flipped him, flipped him over, and now we're, uh, that's a two reversal. Now we're in position to, to uh, control, and he's working that power half. He's half Nelson in, a, in his uh, forearm on the head. You can see he's working that side, really trying to lift that leg to get that leg turk, really keeping the pressure on, on uh, the Stoughton wrestler here. You know, start the period, he was on top. Now, I would think more often than not, that's where you want to start. Um, or, it, or does it depend on the, I guess, the situation? It, but. it depends on the situation. also depends on the wrestler. Um, typically, if, if I'm coaching and uh, I have choice, I like to choose down because you have a lot more opportunities to score points. If you have a guy that's a really tough uh, rider or turn guy, then sure, go, go top. But in a tight match, a 2 nothing match, you want to give yourself an opportunity to score and escape, get back to your feet, or get a reversal, which is what happened. Now, Stoughton, uh, Stoughton's always been real tough in the bottom position, and, and, you can, and part of that's because they're a relentless team and they work super hard on the mat. And so, you know, we did get a reversal there, but you can see he was moving right back, uh, moving down there and got the escape back to our feet. Grayson's got that collar tie, and he's just kind of reaching for a knee pick there. I, now that's an interesting call. Uh, so, so right there, um, the official called Stoughton for a stall call. You don't see stalls against Stoughton very often. Um, but he was backing straight up. Grayson was staying on the pressure, staying with the collar tie, reaching for a leg, and Stoughton wrestler just backed right off the mat. And so uh, Mr. Loebner, he called him for stalling. And now we've got a, a little duck action here and got behind, but wasn't able to keep his feet in bounds to get the takedown. 9.9 .9 seconds left here. Be fantastic to get a takedown, but you don't want to force anything here. Nothing, nothing silly to give up a takedown late. Doing a really nice job hand fighting here. You can see every time he, oh, he's got a single with one hand. He just couldn't get his other hand free to get control there. So four to one going into the third period here, and uh, so you can see here the battle. Yeah, and, and this is a good matchup. Um, so Stoughton uh, down by three, down four one going into the third. They did get away in the second period off after the uh, the reversal. So they're going to choose down here, try to get an escape uh, to get that point, and then the idea would be to get a takedown to tie it up. Um, so he comes to his traditional Stoughton stand up. He got to his feet, and that's encouraging, but he did, wasn't able to finish there. And now, now uh, Grayson's got those, that ankle tied up. He's got those hips turned. You know, as a coach, if you're, d you're down three, you don't want to see your opponent with his hips turned or his hips laying on the mat. There's some individuals in the gym calling for a, stand -up, or calling for a stall on a top man. I'm not sure I would agree with that. I think that's one of those calls late. But. Uh, we got a standing cradle to the mat. He's got his shoulders turned with, into a half. Now we're, no White didn't need to step over there. He would have been fine staying where he's in, but he's going to lock in the legs. He's going to be composed, and he's going to get the pin. But he had to work for that, but boy, solid effort. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that was a tight match uh, going into the third period, only up three. Um, so, good wrestling there uh, by both guys, and you know that's what you want to see on a night like this. You want to see guys wrestling in the third period and wrestling tough. Hey, we just got an email here, and this one uh, says, um, "Thank you, Mike, and all the sponsors for making this possible." This is from Brett and Jody Recheck enjoying tonight's broadcast from the lodge. A special thanks to you, Ryan, for your 
expert analysis. Uh, it says Beaver Dam Wrestling has come a long ways since I opposed them as a Wapan warrior back in the early 80s. That's from Brett Recheck. Brett and Jody checking in. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Again, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to send an email. This is another one of the Beaver Dam wrestlers that I really like watching, Avery Fem right here. Right on the attack, not even 10 seconds in the match. I think he had that shot within a few seconds. But here's here again, Stoughton's right back on the attack. Revere was right in on those legs. So, you know, these are two guys that are getting after it early. And nice one, one arm throw there. I'm not even sure if, if there's a would be a name for that. It just got in an overhook and hip tossed in there <laughs> off the mat. And here we go, 20 seconds in. Oh, nice slide by. Slide by right into a takedown. Almost got near fall. This is the 126 weight class, by the way. 28 to 12. Beaver Dam leads in the match on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Avery is uh, 23 and 8 on the season. And and, and uh, as a sophomore, again, one of those fantastic underclassmen. I, I think he's got a bright future. He's got a nice half, a nice tight half that he just forced over. I think the whole program has a bright future. Oh. They're so young, but they're, they're very competitive. And uh, they, they're, they're not wrestling like freshmen and sophomores most of the time. No, and, you know, there's, there's really good wrestling in the Badger Conference. And for them to be doing what they're doing this year is pretty impressive. Now, they're going to get into the postseason. And uh, I think they're going to be a strong team at the conference and a real strong out at the regional. But they're going to run into, potentially at the sectional tournament, that Kakana team that's a loaded, loaded team. And um, these youngsters are going to get tested the postseason. But that's okay. You know, this team is poised for, for a number of really good years, which is why I keep saying let's get some more wrestling on because this is going to be a fun team to watch in the next couple of years. Yeah, not only is, uh, I mean, do you have uh, some, some very, very talented athletes on this team but just looking at the roster overall numbers are it, it's healthy it's a healthy roster good numbers and uh, you like to see that because you know we see so many schools so many teams at so many schools uh, you know where numbers are hard to come by and you know it's just the, it's just the world we live in there's so many distractions for high school students these days that they could be doing other things besides their sport but numbers are pretty good here for the beaver dam wrestling team and they're only going to get better and um the one thing I will say that is uh, a real bright spot for this wrestling program is, and, and I and I know I've called them out a little bit early tonight, and I'm going to do it again. And, and Brock, you're just you're just going to have to bear with me. But um, there's a lot of programs around the state where the wrestling program and the football program aren't on the best terms. And I can tell you in Beaver Dam, um, the relationship between football and wrestling is strong. Coach Lindy wants his kids here, and he sees it. Look, you want to be get a to be a better football player, you want to be able to learn how to tackle better, come out for wrestling because, you know, we're just practicing tackling every night, every night without pads on, right? So you want to get better at football, come out for wrestling. And there's a strong relationship. Coach Winker's on his staff. And, and so that's a really uh, nice thing to have here at Beaver Dam because it's not everywhere. Um, Chan Suddeth, by the way, here, he's w another one of Stoughton's hammers here. Really, really tough wrestler. Um, and uh, this is another tough matchup for... Um, for the Golden Beavers. Chance took third last year at, at state at 120 pounds. So um, tough matchup for the Beavers, but th you know, they knew that coming in. So the 132 match goes to Stoughton. Yeah. That'll make the uh, score in the meet 34 to 12 Beaver Dam on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Mike Tronson, Ryan Gerber with you, Justin Wilski, AKA Ninja here on site for this dual meet between the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers and the Stoughton Vikings. Thanks for being with us on Daily Dodge TV. Hey, uh, be sure to stay up to date with the Beaver Dam Unified School District at bdusd.org and you can follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Beaver Dam USD. So on to 138 we go. Yeah, and this is another one of Beaver Dam's uh, bright young studs coming up. Landon Grow, he's a freshman. Uh, this year, wrestling up at 138 pounds. He's 24 and 7 on the year. This kid's a physical kid. I, I, this is another one that I really enjoy watching. Uh, and he, you know, having watched him at the beginning of the year, and uh, we talked about his first match under the light, and to see where he's at and, and see the success he's had, it, it's pretty awesome. So this is another young man that's got a bright future. Nice shot. Getting his head up. Finishing. Nice job. Working that leg in, looking do, uh, for a leg ride, a cross body ride here on top. He's looking for perhaps a, a front, uh, excuse me, a half Nelson on top to get those hips turned. But um, Land's another one that's uh, road legs, 
Um, and, and if you're not familiar, he's, he's laced that leg through uh, the bottom wrestler. And, and, and that's a real weapon if you're a good leg rider um, because if you take away half the body and turn half the body, it's hard to, to stay off your back. Now, I can tell you as a wrestler, if any of the, if my old wrestlers are listening, they're probably like, come on, coach, you banned that from the room. Yeah, I did. Uh, because the problem with leg riding is there's a lot of guys that try it and a lot of guys that get out of position and they then they get rolled or put on their back. So as a coach, um, if you're going to bring leg riding into your room, you got to make sure that your guys are, are, are knowledgeable of position, know where their hips are at, and stay in good position. And, and obviously, Coach Winker has done a really nice job of that. So we've got a leg in. Uh, we're really controlling his hips. Now he's prying back on that half Nelson where he's, he's laced his arm through the the opponent's arm onto the head, and he's just prying that head back, uh, similar to an old-school can opener, uh -huh. uh, using leverage to its advantage here. And I can tell you, uh, having been a wrestler, this is not a comfortable position. This is, this is, um, <laughs> this is uncomfortable. Um, but uh, credit to, to uh, Hollister, you know, this is a tough position, but he's not giving up near fall. He's not, give, he's not turning. He's fighting hard like that. And, as a coach, you'd love to see that. That That's not an easy thing to do. So he's going to get, they call that potentially dangerous, and they'll do that anytime they feel like the wrestler's body is, is exceeding um, uh, threshold. So in that case, watching the shoulder, making sure that doesn't. So the official know, does have a dis out. the discretion to say, all right. Absolutely. We're going to, yeah. Wrestling is a tough sport. Wrestling is a physical sport, but it has its limits. Um, they're not going to let that shoulder pop out of place. Um, so the, the ref has discretion there. Um, and in this case, we're in no man's land here. We got some near fall, but we're in rough position. He did get two near fall points, but boy, as a coach, you're kind of taking an exhale there and saying, thank God that uh, the period ended when it did. Got out of the first period with a 4 nothing lead. Yeah. Stone's going to have choice here. It looks like uh, Coach Spildy told him to choose down. He's going to fix his headgear here. Yeah, he's going to go down here. So Landon is is, is pretty tough on top. So if, if for Beaver Dam, you got to feel pretty good here. But I, I will tell you, uh, of all the programs that I've coached against, Stoughton's one of the best programs uh, from that bottom position. Typically, you see a, a, a good uh, quad pod stand up there. Landon did a real nice job stopping that early. Now he's controlling those hips on top. It's a little... A uh, little parallel here, but they're not going to call it right away, but he's got to keep working for stuff. He can't just lay on top. He's got, he's working his leg in. He's got it there. Now he, he's got a nice half. He kicked the leg out. Yeah, get your leg out, get to the side, get your chest on top, get weight on your opponent's chest to get that half. This is another tough position. This kid's flexible and tough. You can see that. <laughs> Doing a great job on the defensive there. Uh, th that position there is every chiropractor's dream <laughs> there. Um, look at that back. Land is doing a nice job holding holding position here. Now it's a now he's in a situation where he doesn't have enough weight on him. So now we've talked about that chest position mm -hmm. yep. throughout the night. It's, it's not on there. Hollister's doing a heck of a job uh, defending here and staying off his back. He's doing a real great job. But now this is this this right here is tough. If I'm coaching Landon here, I'm telling him, get that, that top leg over the top, get your weight down. By keeping the bottom leg out front, his weight's a little bit, you know, not distributed correctly. You want to have that top leg over the top, really adjust your hips. And it looks like we stop for blood. Okay, obviously that's going to yep, yeah. call for an immediate whistle. Yeah. yeah, so anytime that the official sees blood on the mat, we're stopping the match. Um, we Shop. had that on the court in the basketball game a couple <laughs> nights ago when the Beaver Dam girls played Stoughton. Riley Zarnicki had to change her jersey. Boy, oh boy, you'd love to see that with uh, basketball getting after it, getting physical in the, <laughs> I guess in the so, post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does happen, but yeah, that stops things with 41.6 seconds to go in the second period, and uh, so we'll get that cleaned up on the mat here. Uh, on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Beaver Dam 34 and Stoughton 18. That is the score in the match. We're currently at the 138 weight class. Another email came in, says another former Wapan Warrior wrestler <laughs> cheering on Beaver Dam. Says, let's go Beavers, watching from Randolph. That's from our good friend Jeff. Jeff checking in, and uh, 
Well, so it's Beaver Dam and Stoughton Wrestling, but apparently uh, it's the Wapan Wrestling uh, night on the on the uh, the emails. That's fine. Hey, we yeah. we'll take it. Love to see it. Sports at DailyDodge.com if you want to send an email. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If there's any other former wrestlers out there, I don't care what school you went to, uh, let us know. We'd love to hear your uh, where you're where you wrestled at and what you're doing now or what your what your memories are. Hey, let yeah. us know. So they're ready to resume here. We got the uh, the blood cleaned up. So Beaver Dam is going to start in the top position because he had control when we broke. He did a real nice job breaking those hips and getting uh, Hollister flat here. Now we're going to work back, trying to roll those wrists, controlling those wrists because, you know, obviously if you can't push your body up, it's hard to get away. He's got that. looks like he's got both legs in now, which, boy, that's, that's rough. That's hard to get out. And now we're working that power half, trying to pry that shoulder over the top. You can see the refs bending down to really watch that shoulder to make sure things are uh, safe. You know, and, and there's a lot of uh, parents that, especially in the youth, that don't allow their, their kids to try wrestling because they, they look at it from back in the old days and, and the argument is it's brutal or they're cutting weight or they're doing this or that. And I can tell you that wrestling as in its current uh, incarnation is one of the safest sports out there and even when we go back to COVID there was a reason why we were able to get through our season when so many weren't. There's a lot of myths out there about wrestling but wrestling really truly is a, a clean and safe sport. We, we know you know it's part of our DNA and how to do that and here's a reversal by Beaver Dam and reversal right to his back. We're getting near fall points he's got those legs turned now it's just a matter of pinning that uh, right shoulder to the mat and, and finishing this thing off. He's got to arch his back here and when he arches his back that, that shifts the, the weight towards the uh, Stoughton kid's shoulders. He wasn't able to get that. We still got legs in but you can see we're a little bit high. You can see where our, our chest is. We're, we're sticking out a little bit further than we want. Uh, Landon's face is on the mat. Typically, you don't, you don't want that. It's probably not the position out. you want to be in, is no, it? No, you lose leverage points there when, when you're that far out. He, I think, you know, he's so, he's so strong in this position. He's doing a nice job getting the turn. He's back to that half. Back to prying on that shoulder. You can see it from here. It had a great angle of it. See where that shoulder was starting to expose itself and, and Ralph stopped it, but at the same time, he got three near fall points. The match stops and a technical fall, which means that we were up 15 points. So 15 points, uh, anytime you go up 15, the match is stopped. Um, and on the scoreboard for the Golden Beavers, that's five points anytime you're, you win by 15. Tech fall or, tech or by fall. 15? Okay. Yep, tech fall, 15. So it's 39 to 18. Beaver Dam leading Stoughton as we move on now to the 145 weight class. Ryan Gerber is our play-by-play -play man tonight. My name is Mike Tronson. Thanks for being with us. Daily Dodge TV for Beaver Dam High School Wrestling. Again, if you want to send an email, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us. We've got a busy week of high school sports coming up next week on Daily Dodge TV. We've got uh, some basketball and also some hockey coming up on Tuesday night. I'm going to be over at the Beaver Dam Middle School for the Beaver Dam <laughs> girls basketball game against Fort Atkinson. Yep. And I've been broadcasting high school sports here for 26 years in this, uh, this town. Ryan, I've never once broadcast a game at the middle school I'm looking forward to. Yeah, well, and so the reason for that is... Um, parade of bands here. Parade it? of bands. So we have the String Fling on Monday, which is our orchestra program. And our parade of bands is uh, in here Tuesday. So... Uh, when we had that conflict, I, I talked to Coach Chase and said, hey, you know, why don't we go to the middle school? By the way, I'm a trombone player, too, so oh, I, I could be here for the parade. I could play with them, but they probably don't want me to play with them. But that's you, you do all these sports, you're announcing, you got the trombone, you're a triple threat. Well, I try to be. <laughs> well, you, you, weren't, you weren't here last year the night that I sat in with a pep band, the same night I was broadcasting a basketball game. Oh, perfect. I, was, I became the first broadcaster in history to play with the pep band while I was broadcasting a game. So here's something. Whenever I'm at home watching the, the matches and Wade Bates is on the call, he always makes a comment. So, Wade, if you're out there listening, do you play an instrument? Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can see. Maybe we can have a, a, a you know, a playoff on the air. I think he plays the accordion. Oh, the accordion. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something he would play, then. Wade Bates? I don't put it past him. Well, you know, I, I, I thought I saw that LP at the uh, radio station, you know, <laughs> uh, Polka Hits by Wade Bates. Oh, man. Well, then I'm going to have to see this in action. So 
Uh, back to wrestling. Yeah, back here. Um, so this is uh, Sarbacher here. Here's another one of their uh, really good, strong wrestlers here. Um, Cole Sarbacher for, uh, for Stoughton here. Um, another one of the guys we knew coming into this match was going to be a tough matchup for us. And, and again, it is a wrestler that you're going to see late in the year. He, he was a state qualifier last year at 132 pounds. He actually uh, was beat at the state tournament by somebody you might know, a guy by the mis name of Mr. Newberger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrestled for, uh, for Beaver Dam. Uh, uh, Kyle beat him in su sudden victory last year in overtime. So um, certainly a little bit of history there. Uh, Sarbacher, uh, wrestling family throughout the state's always been a strong, uh, strong name in wrestling and uh, continues to be here. Nice, nice outside shot. Uh, lifting the leg up nice and high, getting leverage, getting the takedown here. You can, you can see he's, he's had a lot of mat time and, and, and wrestled some tough competition. He's a, he's, he's a real good one. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I'm getting texts. Uh, there's a couple Stoughton Vikings wrestling in the field house tonight. The Badgers are wrestling uh, Purdue. Purdue, okay. And from what I can tell, Mr. Model uh, had a big win. I, I don't want to spoil anything. So if you're a Stoughton fan watching the feed tonight and you're going to get the results later, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you might want to check it out. Starbacher doing a real nice job staying behind those arms and following uh, in this in this matchup here. Nice job uh, by him, up six to two here. By the way, I just got another email from Brett Recheck. He said, wrestling has been, this is touching on what you were talking about, wrestling has become much safer through the years. Limiting weight loss was the best thing that happened to high school wrestling, according to uh, Brett Recheck. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it was something as a coach I would fight with um, on a daily because you get a lot of people who remember the way it was back in the 70s and 80s and, and hearing some of those stories, and that's not the case at all. Uh, we do a, a great job of really protecting the athletes. And in fact, they're very limited in what they can actually lose, and they're very limited into the weight classes they can compete in. So uh, if you're a parent out there that's kind of on the fence about wrestling, uh, trust me, it's safe. Um, it's it's research-based. Um, nobody's cutting weight anymore. Um, you know, losing a couple pounds here or there is not cutting weight. Uh, it's probably a good weight to lose. <laughs> Um, and, and the, the amount of calories you're going to burn in a, in a typical practice, heck, in a six-minute match is pretty extensive. So these kids today aren't cutting weight like they did back, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, it's safe. Um, and, you know, even, even so much that's changed during the time that I've coached with, with concussion protocols and attention to head injuries, you know, you would think in a sport like this where you're slamming each other around in the mat that you'd see that. Wrestling's pretty safe when it comes to concussions. You don't see it. Um, you know, girls' soccer is it has a lot more concussions than wrestling does. If You, you wouldn't think so, would you? Well, they, they do use their but, head to but hit you, the but ball. Yes, you, they use their heads. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say that. They, yeah. you know, you, you get those headers, I suppose that can happen, yeah. you know? Yeah, it, wrestling, you know, when you talk about injuries in wrestling, you're typically seeing, you know, skin skin borne things but um you know bloody noses <laughs> blood based uh injuries uh uh cuts across uh, over the eye you know it, it, it's not you know there's a lot of miss out there sarbacher with a nice shot there nice finish he's got to get a breakdown 36 seconds left in the match he's up 10 to 3 here uh for beaver dam here it'd be nice to get one get back up to her feet but you know, again, Sarbacher is, is really uh, controlling that leg, really crowding here on top and, and really controlling controlling uh, the action here. Appreciate all of, the, all of the people tuning in from Wapan and, and elsewhere watching us. Um, call up your friends. Tell them to tune it on. If we have big-time viewership, the Daily Dodge will want to cover wrestling more we, and watch this awesome team. So... Let them know. Come on out, turn it on, get on the computer, put all it up on your phone, download the BoxCast app on, on Roku. Even on YouTube, I know the Daily Dodge has a YouTube channel that they show it up on. Um, let's get viewership up for wrestling and, and get more of this going. Sorry for the, the shameless No, there. that's that's fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better myself. No, it's nice that we can, you know, we do a lot of the traditional sports, the yeah. football, the basketball, the hockey, but it's nice that we can do things like this yeah. as well, you know, and, yeah. and branch out a little bit. Oh, you guys do tremendous. I, in 
and the amount of, of coverage that uh, that you guys are able to provide for the high school is, is, is awesome here. Well, it's also nice that we have a wonderful partnership. I mean, all of our partners are fantastic, and we, we appreciate them so much. We couldn't do without them. One of our biggest partners is the Beaver Dam Unified School District, and, and that's that's pretty, uh, pretty special, pretty rare, I would think, yeah. to have a school district in partnership with local media like that. Oh, well, yeah. And, you know, I, I think we learned a lot through COVID about, the, the importance of streaming and providing these services for people that maybe can't make it out to the matches. So, I mean, it was it was only a couple of big years. time oh. cradle here by Stoughton. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah. Th this. That's why I stopped there. I looked like he was getting close to the pin. And yeah, Sarbacher, real physical match there. Um, dominated throughout but again tough wrestler state qualifier uh he'll be back uh up up at the cole center wrestling at the end of the year what i was going to say uh, just a moment ago though you know it was only a couple of years ago i remember being in this gym ryan uh when there were no fans in here broadcasting uh basketball there were no fans i was up here by myself uh, ninja and i were up here by ourselves with no fans in attendance wearing masks socially distanced and um uh, I hope we never have to revisit that ever yeah. again. Uh, I, I, I hope that that never happens again. It was one of the most surreal things. And uh, But uh, hey, we, we've come through it and uh, you know, we move on, life goes on. So we go on to the 152 weight class now. Yeah, so Stoughton uh, mixed up uh, the lineup here a little bit, but you know, again, gamesmanship happens with rosters and it doesn't always come out the way it is, but Easton Ward here, he's another real strong wrestler and, and gets after it and gets a takedown early with uh, in the first 15 seconds of the match and really looking to control here. Um, he's got to get his, he, he's looking for an arm bar, he's a little high, a little high, he's got a wrist in that arm bar, but that arm bar isn't real deep. Um, he, he's he's got to break, break the opponent down to a hip. The opponent's reaching all the way around on the hip there and, and it's preventing, uh, really preventing us from getting it, but there he's on a hip. He's got to stay pressure on top. Now we're in a leg turk there, which means we have that l bottom leg locked. We've got to elevate that a little bit, but yep, elevate that leg, arch your back, keep pressure on top. i lose it here a little bit. Yep. Too near fall. We'll take it up four to nothing. Got a half and a wrist. That wrist on the far side prevents uh, prevents him from stopping. They gave it up there. Back to that half and wrist. And he's going to take him right over the top. He's got to keep his hip over the top to keep the weight distributed properly. And there's a pin. Nicely done. Yeah, nice job. So on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's now 45-24 in favor of Beaver Dam leading Stoughton. Yeah, wrestling tough. Wrestling real tough and, and uh, you know, getting some points uh, early. You know, they jumped out to that 10-point lead starting at 182 pounds. And again, that set the tone. They haven't looked back. So um, lined, up, lined up real nice for them tonight so far. Got well, a couple matches go yet, though. Don't forget to uh, tune into the monthly Let's Talk radio show with Superintendent Mark DiStefano on the third Thursday of the month at 11.10 a.m. on 95.3 WBEV, the Beaver Dam Unified School District, guiding students, empowering futures. On to 160, we move. So this is uh, Ethan Soderbloom from Stoughton. He was 12-8 and eight last year, sectional qualifier in Division I, um, wrestling Gavin Vitens uh, at 160 pounds. This is a match of two guys that have a ton of potential a um, ton of potential to, to make some runs at the end of the year. It's just um, going to depend on matchups just like everything else, just like any other sport. Um, Soderbloom here on a single leg, popping that leg out, trying to elevate that, getting the go behind for takedown. That was a real nice transition, uh, single to the feet and then uh, finishing on top. He, now he's riding with a uh, tight waist there, and tight waist is a, is a great, uh, a 
great way to slow a guy down. He's chopping on the far side, trying to get him down to a hip. The messages keep on coming, don't they? <laughs> messages keep on coming. Yeah, I, I've uh, I got a couple people reaching out. Um, it was senior night back in, in Fort Atkinson. Um, they wrestled uh, MGM uh, Monona Grove, who we wrestled here. Right. And it sounds like uh, the Blackhawks uh, took down uh, the Silver Eagles. So uh, nice for the seniors um, that I had for three years there. So <laughs> wasn't able to be there tonight. But, um, you know, congratulations to those guys and thinking about them as, as we go through the season. And I'll be down there tomorrow. We host our big... Uh, invite, 16 team invite. So yeah, you're TKO. a busy guy this oh, weekend, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I'll uh, be heading home tonight and then up early tomorrow to get ready for a tournament. Are you, are you commuting right now? As well? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yep. About what, 45 minutes or so? About 45 minutes, yeah. Uh, a nice opportunity to clear your head before you walk in and, and turn in, turn back into dad on, uh, on the night when you get home. I always like going to Fort Atkinson. I've done plenty of games there over the years uh, and uh, Wonderful uh, facility uh, in their gymnasium. Nice press box. They always put us oh, yeah. in. Very hospitable, and I uh, always enjoy going down there. Well, uh, you, know, you know, there's a reason we stayed there, and, and uh, we really like the town. But um, my, kind of my mentor, the athletic director there, Steve Mahoney, he, he does a first-class job there, and, um, you know, he makes sure that if you're the visiting team, you feel, feel welcome. This is a tough spot for Gavin to be in. He's stuck in a cradle position there. Um, Soder Bloom's just had really good position and just kind of um, swarmed them throughout that period in the top position and, and finished in the cradle and, and just ran out of time there. So 5 nothing going into the second period. He's going to defer. Uh, defer choice to, to Beaver Dam and we're going to choose neutral here. Try to get a takedown. Wrestling from bottom didn't really work out there at the end so let's go neutral. we got to get on a shot. See they're coming out being aggressive, looking for that shot again. That's what we need to see out of Gavin here. We need to see him get on the gas here. There's a nice shot. Got to stay with it. Got a circle there. If you get stuck, circle. Soda Bloom's doing a nice job staying on that ankle, preventing him from moving. He's got to stop there. You can see what he's doing that I called for earlier in the duel. He's stuffing our head. But we're just kind of powering through. Kudos to our weight room program. <laughs> um, started with a nice shot, but Stoughton did a heck of a job in shot defense here. And uh, we're going back neutral. We'll score. Got to see a shot here. Got to get on the offense. You know, you, you, they say in basketball you miss the shots you don't take, well, same thing applies in wrestling. You don't take a shot, you're not going to score. And uh, Stoughton's, Stoughton's doing a nice job of it in this match. They're taking shots. Took a single leg and reached all the way up for a cradle. Uh, he's going to get a takedown here. Missed the cradle, but he, he's got, got us on our side here. Got two up 7 nothing. You want to take shots, I suppose, but you you got to be smart about it, too. Right. I mean. you, you can't just dive in, absolutely. Um, you got to be a little bit strategic, however... Um, as a coach, you want your athlete to realize, hey, you're down five. We're in the middle of the second period. You need to get on your offense. You've got to be opening things up. Now, we just got called for stalling there. And, and if you're watching that and you're like, well, wow, that's kind of quick. Well, the reason he got called for stalling is he got taken down and he kept his head on the mat. In the bottom position, you have to be working to get an escape or a reversal. And when your head's on the mat and you're laying on a hip, that's not an attempt to get away. Um, and so in, good officiating is going to see that. In the high school level, they're going to give you a chance to, to work your way up. But if, if you're you called for there, stalling more than once, is that yep, the, the point? point. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, you get a warning the first time and then a point. Yep, point, point, two points, and then ejection. Um, if so, it got that bad. Oh, yeah. You ever and, seen and, that in, a, in your coaching career? Uh, you ever seen anybody ejected for that? Oh, yeah. I've seen really? it. And okay. uh, when I was wrestling, uh, I think it was my senior year, I had... I won two matches by guys stalling out. So, wow. Yeah. Um, and now Stoughton got, Stoughton got called for stalling on top there. So calling stalling a little bit quick there. Um, not if, sure the Stoughton If you're going to stall out, you, well, you almost think, why don't you just forfeit the match? Well, I mean, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's rare, I'm sure. But. And a lot of officials, 
admittedly don't ever want to get to the position of, of being there right, to being call there. it. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, once you see that two-point stall call, eventually you don't see officials, you know, they're not looking forward to it. They don't want to have to decide the outcome of the match. Um, you know, you look at uh, the international level, at the freestyle and Greco level, you know, they're putting in rules to prevent that. Um, and I think at the high school level, we need to, to start to, to look at, at stalling a little bit more aggressively. So we're trying to put a leg in, and we're not getting that leg all the way through. Stoughton's caught that leg. You can see he's caught the leg. He's underneath the leg. Now we're in trouble. Now we're going to our side. All Stoughton has to do is keep getting their hips up, keep coming through. He's going to pop his head through, and, and we're in trouble here. Now he's, he's got our legs turned, our hips are turned. A half Nelson would work just fine. He's going with a shoulder hook to get those near fall points. But that, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier uh, in the, the, the story I gave about my team in, in oh, leg riding. One of the risks of legs is if you, you try to throw that leg in to get that uh, position and you don't get that leg all the way through, you don't get that heel um, popped out there and they catch it, boy, you can be in trouble. And go from a dominant position to now underneath. So Gavin's down 11. Um, Stoughton's in position to get a, a major uh, decision here. Um, you'd like, if you're Coach Winker, you'd like to see, like to see him work, work his hips off the mat, get his head off the mat, work to get an escape, work to get uh, some points here, um, and finish in a positive spot. There he's got. He's looking for wrists. Looking for wrists. He's got back up to his feet. He's got to get his hips away. Stoughton did a nice well, job. He's of really battling, isn't he? Yeah. I tell you what. Yeah. And, and you know that's that's kind of what I was just talking about. You want to see your wrestlers um, continue to fight through, no matter if you're down 11 points or down one point. You want to see them keep coming up to their feet, keep fighting there, and um, let's see if, what he can do here. Well, no real mo motion off the bottom. He's quad pod. He's up to his feet. He's got to pop his hips out. Pop his hips out to get those hands broken. He's got his legs turned. He's got to turn. Cut through. Cut through hard. Cut through hard. He's not able to do that. Runs out of time. Well, he, like you said, he battled in that match. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he, you look at that match, he did get called for stalling. He did get beat 11-0, but fought through the rest of the match. He did get to his feet there, gave himself an opportunity to score late, and you might be saying, well, geez, what are you, what are you talking about? It's a one point, that, one point for an escape there, but as a coach, you don't want to see your guys giving up out there. You want to see them fighting through, and in that case, um, giving himself an opportunity to score late and keep going. So on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, 45-28 in the match. Beaverdam leads Stoughton. And right now we move on to 170. Yeah, last match of the last night. Match. Boy, it's going by quick, isn't it? <laughs> it really Time is. flies when you're having fun. <laughs> We've had a lot of pins too. We have. You yes. know, in, in some of the um, some of our older so the viewers. Final match of tonight's duel, um, wrestling at 170 pounds from the Vikings, Gatlin Empty versus Mason Grove. So Mason Grove, Landon's brother. For some of our older uh, viewers, and, and by older, I, I don't, you know, uh, guys that wrestled in the uh, 80s and 90s, they, they might be saying, geez, there's a lot of pins, and, and they're absolutely right. It, pinning has become uh, a bigger and bigger component of high school wrestling and high school duels, and you see, when you look at the box scores, you see pin after pin after pin. You know, back in the day, there was a lot more six-minute matches and a lot of one-point matches, and you can take from that what you will, um, but boy, the matches do fly a lot faster than they, they used to. <laughs> you used to have to really settle in, get your drink, get some popcorn, and um, and get a comfortable chair, and now they fly by in 45 minutes to an hour. I wasn't a wrestler, but uh, do I fall into the older category? I'm 48, so I, I don't know. But I'm going to... Yeah, I, yeah, I need to say, yeah, he didn't even, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Justin, appreciate it very much. Nice slide by to I, I prefer to use the term more mature viewers, but. Uh, seasoned. seasoned, seasoned, yeah. there we go. Yeah, nice attack by Mason uh, to that outside single right to his feet. Now he's trying to work that wrist out, didn't get it, back to the cross face. What I really like what he's doing here is he's going from uh, move set to move set to move set. He's looking for a tilt, didn't have it tight enough, boy, that 
That's what gets your coach out of his seat and saying, whoa, 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 slow down. Nice transition into a leg turk. Again, we're, we're, we're hooking that leg, lifting it up nice and high. We got an arch, the cross face, get, looking for near fall points. Nice, tough cross face. He's got to arch his back a little bit more. Arch his back a little. Right there, we want to arch our back. That'll, that'll lift the leg, that'll pin that shoulder closer to the mat uh, in just a better position. See, he's got a little bit of arch there. Got to keep lifting that leg. Keep lifting that leg. That's a tough position if you're the bottom man. Uh, kind of a helpless position. All right, so this is, this is a unique... What a, what a great moment to talk about in our last match. So they stopped the match there for blood. Okay. And, and the bottom wrestler was bleeding. So in, in this case, it helped him out um, in a near-fall pinning situation. So blood was seen. They stopped the match immediately. Now, what you probably notice is the official put up uh, four points there for a near-fall. That fourth point, so it was a three near-fall for a count of five. The fourth near-fall happens to be because they had to stop the match in a pinning situation. So it goes from a three-point near fall to a four-point near fall due to that. Tonight's game, or match, I should say, brought to you by Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. They are our presenting video sponsors. Tonight's match is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. Mike Tronson alongside BDHS Activities Director Ryan Gerber, Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, as our videographer and engineer as we resume the uh, last match of the night at 170, 12 seconds to go first period. <clears throat> 12 seconds to go, we're, we have a six point lead. Nice breakdown off the whistle. Uh, working that, that uh, arm bar, now back to a wrist. He's looking for a tilt here, looking to, to roll over a tilt and just ran out of time, but it looked like he was loading that up, had that tight. Beaver Dam's gonna have uh, Stoughton had choice, deferred, nope. Excuse me, Beaver Dam has choice and they're gonna defer. Stoughton's gonna choose neutral. Love seeing this because that means opportunities for takedowns. Go to two on one here. You know, one thing I haven't seen from Stoughton tonight, which they were always known for um, the last few years, is, is a Russian arm tie, where you're taking your opponent's arm and you have two hands on their one. And, and Stoughton was really strong with that the last few years, and it's something that as a coach wrestling them, you, you would really prepare for. I haven't seen it once tonight, so uh, maybe some changing technique in, in their room uh, this year and going forward. Nice hand fighting, nice um, kind of a, a snap down. Stoughton kid took a shot there, so we're in shot defense, staying tough on a tight waist. Now he's got to lift that elbow, and, and that'll peel that arm off. Now it's a nice takedown. And, and really, from that position, the Stoughton wrestler is on his hips. It's really hard to finish there or even prevent a takedown when you're on your hips there. So it was really for him to just kind of hold on tight, and Mason was able to break the lock and get behind. Now he's working for a, um, a hammer lock here, trying to drag that arm out and put on his back and it doesn't work, so he's going to transition to something else. He, he's doing a great job of, of chain wrestling, going from one move set to the next move set to the next move set. He, he's just relentless on top. He, he doesn't, um, you know, you see some wrestlers, especially inexperienced wrestlers, who they, they lock onto one move set and if it doesn't work, well, they kind of don't know what to do. Mason, from what I can tell, has gone through four, four different move sets. It's a very interesting call here. I, you know, stall call from the top man. Uh, um, he's saying that uh, Mason was riding parallel. He wasn't getting out to the side, um, and, and that's the one thing. Stalling is a subjective call, uh, but the rule does say you have to get out to the side. You can't ride right on top. You can't be parallel. You have to be working for a turn and. Even though I think he was working for a turn, he was a little parallel there, and that's the call they they made, and it is what it is. A little uh, stoppage here with 45.7 to go in the second. Well, and it, at the same time, we have a little bit of blood that has to be cleaned up. So, Not uh, the first time we've seen this today. No, no, and I was talking to uh, the official and um, a couple of the guys before the match, and 
Actually, I was talking to uh, Jason, our trainer, and I said, you know, every year that we wrestled Stoughton in a duel, man, there was, it seemed like there was tons of blood, blood time all the time, and just two teams getting after it, being physical, and you're going to have that. Looks like we've got it uh, taken care of once more. Resume with Beaver Dam on top. By the way, I got to give a shout out to Jason and Marshfield uh, Medical Clinic. They, we have tremendous uh, athletic trainers here uh, that we have access to, and they do a great job with our athletes. So props to them and, and for their commitment to Beaver Dam High School and, and our student athletes. I think we all were reminded a couple of weeks ago just how important those people are after what we saw in that Buffalo mm -hmm. Cincinnati football game. And uh, those folks are. Uh, they truly are heroes yeah. and lifesavers, and, and we need them, and we thank them. And knock on wood, and hopefully we never have to deal with that here. Right, you, um, exactly. But uh, uh, we've, ha we've had some, you know, we've had injuries throughout the year, and, and the medical staff here that, that we have access to has done a tremendous job not only caring for our athletes, but making sure they're ready to get back on the field, the court, in the pool, on the mat, wherever that, on the ice, wherever that may be. Wherever that may be. <laughs> so uh, Mason's got choice here going into the third period. He's choosing down. Now, he's got an eight-point uh, advantage. And, and while you might say, well, geez, Beaver Dam's up 45-28. Are we really looking for team points? Yes, we're still looking for team points. You want to win each individual match, and you want to do as well as you can, not only for you, but for the team. So, yeah, you look for bonus points. It, it, this isn't like basketball where you're up big and you're just sitting back and shooting threes. It's not like football where you're up big and you're still throwing. Wrestling, the team points come from individual results, and, and you want your kids to do the best they can. Um, so... Um, well, you're not going to tell a wrestler to go out there and not do their best. Correct. I mean, you're just, you know, that's that's the thing. I, you know, we have a, do we have more blood or what? Do we have? No. What no. happened? We have a broken headgear. Oh, broken headgear. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> an equipment problem. But what I was about to say was that, you know, it, we this used to come up a little bit in in uh, some basketball broadcasts when I was covering uh, Randolph boys when they'd win mm -hmm. when they were winning all those state titles yeah. and some of their games they would just be absolutely dominating uh, teams in the second half. And why why are the uh, you know, why are they, they're, they're running up the score. That was the complaint from, no, no, no. Uh, if, you know, if, if, if coach puts his reserves in mm -hmm. and they happen to be as good or better than the other team, I mean, so be it. You're not going to tell them to go out there and uh, don't play. Yeah. Don't play. You, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, it's it, not running up the score. That's not what the, that's not what it is. It's not like Coach Bielema saying, "Well, this is what the card said to do." Right. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's it's, it's, it's not. Although what it that is. was against Minnesota, so uh, I don't know if anyone was complaining. <laughs> but no, probably you, not around here. They were no. Uh, but you want your, your you want your guys to compete, and and in this match here, you want you want Mason to to wrestle six minute match, and, and you want him to wrestle tough throughout because those minutes, those seconds, those those tough goes on the match here are going to pay dividends in February. So we're hand fighting there. Uh, Stoughton took a shot there. We're up nine. We're going to peel that hand, go behind. Now we're up 11 with under a minute to go to finish this match. We need to stay on top. Uh, we need to stay in control. Nothing silly, nothing reckless. If we can get a couple turns to, to get a tech, great. If not, let's ride them out. Let's stay wrestling on the side so we don't get called for stall because uh, we already have a warn against us. But let's just keep wrestling tough. Yeah, see, he's getting out to the side more. Now he's got that arm bar. He's got an arm bar and a wrist. Uh, he's got 30 seconds to get a turn. We really need to be forcing the issue here a little bit. Um, he's getting off to the side. He's going to pick a leg. Now he's coming back to the cross face. He's got to pop that elbow forward. Uh, if he's going to go for a cross face, then he'd be able to reach that tricep a little bit better. Ten seconds to go here. And now Stoughton's getting called for stalling on bottom. He's just kind of laying flat with his head on the mat. Although if I were a coach, I'd be saying, geez, he's riding us tough. What do you want him to do? But it is the rules. Nice job, Mason. A nice job whatever the teammate was volunteering his headgear <laughs> in short time. 49-28, Golden Beers. Nice job, fellas. That's an impressive win for this young squad over uh, perennial power in Stoughton. So your final on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Beaverdam 49 and Stoughton 28. Right now we'll take a break. We'll come back for our John Deere postgame show right after this break on Daily Dodge TV. You're watching the Daily Dodge postgame show presented by John Deere. 
John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ergobank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ergobank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Happy New Year from our family to yours at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Now let's celebrate with the Start Something New sales event featuring $5,500 off Dodge Durango's. That's right, a brand new iconic six-passenger SUV for $40,700. For your Ram truck buyers, take $82.65 off Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance for 1.9%. By far the best truck deal in the market today. And of course, we can't forget Jeeps. Brand new Cherokee Latitude Lux 4x4s, $35 grand. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthinds.com, search by Beaver Dam, and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. And welcome back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. We're inside the Lodge, where Beaver Dam has defeated Stoughton 49-28 in this wrestling duel. Made Coach Tim Winker, he's huffing and puffing his way up here <laughs> to the broadcast. You have to hand him a microphone. Coach, how are you, buddy? Good uh, to see you. Better after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the win. Uh, give me your overall thoughts here. I... Uh, just an awesome effort by your team against uh, perennial power. And I thought the tone was set early. Those first couple matches, I thought, really set the tone for you tonight. Yeah, I thought uh, every single one of our matches, I thought we wrestled well. Um, I mean, Stoughton, as normal, always has tough kids. Um, and they still got some very, very good wrestlers out there. Um, but even those matches where we're, they had the upper hand, um, I thought our kids really battled well and stayed in good position, did the best they could for the for the situation they were put into. I thought, you know, at times that your wrestlers were were fairly aggressive, taking some shots, but they were smart. I thought for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it's it's intelligent aggression. It's knowing when to push the pace, when to uh, maybe take chances, and when to just stay in good position and uh, make sure you're managing the match. Ryan and I were talking about that. You like that as a coach? I mean, obviously you want to be smart, but you like that when they, when they're being aggressive like that? Oh, of course. I mean, I I always want kids to score points. End of the day, that's how you're going to win a match. That's how you're going to get a fall. So 
So um, you want kids to be aggressive, but you want them to be aggressive in the correct situation and understand the, the pace of the match and where, where the situation dictates it. And uh, it was senior night tonight. And uh, I tell you what, nice, nice tributes, by the way. Uh, we had that on the air earlier. But uh, your seniors uh, did quite well, I thought. Yes, yeah, so I'm very proud of all of our seniors. Um, they've contributed a ton to the program, regardless of, uh, of how many years they've been here. But um, we would not be the program we are without the, the hard work and the dedication those, those young men and women have, have given us. Yeah, you just answered, started to answer my question. And that is, you know, what, I mean, every group of seniors is different. I get that. But, you know, what, what do these mean to you personally, these, these bunch of uh, kids right here? Oh, this is just a, a group of really gritty, hardworking kids. Um, you know, obviously two of them on varsity, two of them are, are wrestling as a, as a backup this year. Um, but that speaks to the level of our, our program, the, the quality of the kids we're putting on the mat. Um, and the, the, what I get to see in practice every day is those seniors um, wrestling tough against some very quality opponents. I mean, there's a lot of kids that um, are, a lot of our backups might be starting for a lot of other teams in the state, but they don't get to for us because, you know, we, we're putting a pretty good lineup together right now. Um, but these seniors have, have stuck with it through, uh, through some pretty tough years and uh, very proud of all the dedication and hard work they've done. And, um, they've, they're a big part of getting us to where we are right now. Not just your wrestlers, a couple of managers in there too. I know, hey, I, we don't often talk about them, especially <laughs> in the media, but hey, that, they're important behind the scenes. They really are. Uh, absolutely. The amount of time they, they save me so much time for all of the statistical managerial things they can do um, so that I'm able to focus more on the, the coaching end of things. Um, so I'm, I'm always grateful for all the work they do. They, they understand where we got to go, what we got to do every week. Um, so it's just one less thing that I need to worry about as a head coach that I know they got it taken care of and ready for us. Now, dual season's finishing up. It's been a real nice ride. And for those who, out there that don't know yet, you still got a chance for a conference title yet. How do you balance that with knowing where you have to get later in February with regionals and sectionals looming? Well, I mean, we've been talking all year about what we can accomplish as a team. Um, and I think that's our first goal, first and foremost. Um, certainly, we want to see individual success, um, but we are five and one now in the conference. We have DeForest coming up next week, um, so we have a good shot of going into the conference tournament with six points towards the conference title. Um, at the conference tournament, um, the Badger East um, competing against all 15 teams, um, but the highest placing team out of the Badger East would get seven points, second place would be six, um, and so on down. So if we're able to be the highest placing Badger East team, um, that would give us an extra point over Milton or at least one extra point and give us the opportunity for a share of the conference title. Um, and I think that's where all these kids are still focused. Um, we've been talking about it all year about, you know, we lost a close duel to Milton. Well, you know, we still got one more shot at the end of the year as long as we're, we're taking care of business in every duel. Um, we'll have one more shot at it. Um, and after conference, we'll go to regionals. And regionals, we're, we've been talking about being regional champs, what we got to do to get there. Um, and certainly regionals, you can kind of move kids around, maybe best for them for the state tournament. Uh, but these kids, I think, are really focused on what's best for the team and where that, where that weigh-in might be so that we can, we can score team points and continue wrestling as a team. Now, tomorrow, you don't have a day off. Going down to <laughs> Whitnall for the Zielinski duels. Just take, talk about kind of scheduling and why you're, you're at that tournament tomorrow and what that does to prepare you later in the year. Uh, we've been at the Zielinski duels as long as I've been here when Coach Slayton was still here. Um, and it's always a great way to kind of finish up our tournament season uh, before conference. Um, it gets kids focused on making sure they understand this is a team sport. Um, we can have individual success, but at the end of the day, we're all wearing the same singlet and we're all representing the same school. Um, so we can find, when we can find success as a team and kind of bring everybody together as a team and wrestle in a dual tournament, um, it really just helps continue that, that mentality and that motto throughout the season. Um, we were really fortunate last year. We were able to go uh, win our first two duels and get into the, the small gym. Um, got a little bit rougher in there. We ended up with some injuries the night before, actually, when we wrestled Stoughton again last year. But um, we're hoping to uh, wrestle some tough duels tomorrow and see how we can come out of there. Yeah, best of luck. Let's go 5-0 and tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> if we go 5-0, and I want to raise. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Coach, congratulations to you and the boys on the win. Thanks for stopping up and uh, offering Thanks, some insight Scott. for us. Thank you. All right. Good to see you, Coach. That's Tim Winker, head coach of the Beaver Dam wrestling team. And, uh, boy, he's really got to be excited about the position that his team is in right now. Being as young as they are, 
Um, this is these are exciting times here as far as Beaver Dam wrestling. Goes. Uh, absolutely, and and I think you know, look, this isn't a woe is me thing. I think they fly under the radar a little bit because basketball is so strong in this community, and and traditionally in our area, basketball's been strong. But this is a program that I hope people are really starting to pay attention to. This is a rise. program. It's on the rise. They're not only good and be good this year, but they're going to be good the next couple of years. And it, it's not just the team aspect, too. They've got individuals where if they aren't qualifying for the state tournament next this year, they're going to be there next year. And it's going to not just be one or two. It's going to be a group of them. So this is a team. Hey, there's plenty of room on the bandwagon. Jump on. <laughs> It's going to be an exciting run, and they've got the, we've got the right guy uh, running the program. We've got a strong youth program uh, to support him. This is a program that's primed to, to last, and uh, it's going to be an exciting finish to this year. I hope it's a very long ways off, um, and, and it's going to be a fun, uh, fun thing to watch the next couple of years. All right, well, tell you what, let's take one final timeout. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our John Deere postgame show brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works right after this break on Daily Dodge TV. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment, and Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. Les le bon temps roule. It's a Mardi Gras thing, and it means let the good times roll. At Great Harvest, we're rolling out the Mardi Gras King Cake. Baked fresh, decorated in Mardi Gras colors, and the figure of a little baby. It's a Mardi Gras thing. Find the baby, and the next party's on you. So roll into Great Harvest, and roll out with Mardi Gras' sweetest tradition. Great Harvest. Bread. The way it ought to be. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Vasco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 east of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaver Dam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaver Dam, across the street from Beaver Dam Food Pride. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. And once again, Mike Tronson alongside Ryan Gerber inside the uh, BDHS Fieldhouse, the Lodge, as they like to call it here. <laughs> it was uh, a great dual meet between Beaver Dam and Stoughton, and the Golden Beaver wrestlers victorious tonight, 49 28 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And uh, as we start to uh, wrap things up here, hey, I mentioned it earlier, we've got a busy week of high school sports uh, this coming week on Daily Dodge TV and also on our uh, radio station, 1430 ESPN. Now on Tuesday night, we've got actually a doubleheader for you. We've got basketball and hockey. We've got the Beaver Dam girls basketball team hosting Fort Atkinson at the middle school on Tuesday the pond. night. The pond, as they like the, to call it. Is that what they call it? They the call pond? it the pond. Okay. Yeah. And then, speaking of the pond, we've got Beaver Dam boys hockey entertaining Appleton over at the Family Center also on Tuesday night. And uh, so we'll have both those games. The hockey game starts at 7 o'clock, pregame show around 6.45, and the basketball game will start at approximately 7.15, pregame show around 7 o'clock. Now, the list I have here says that the hockey game will be on Daily Dodge TV, and it says the, the basketball game on 1430 ESPN. But I'm wondering, uh, Ninja, do we know, are we, sim are we uh, video streaming both of those? Because we did that last week. I, I think I think we are, so we'll check on that for you. But uh, and then on uh, Friday night uh, of next week, 
Uh, speaking of Stoughton and Beaver Dam, Stoughton boys basketball comes here to the field house. We'll have the uh, Beaver Dam Stoughton boys basketball game, Daily Dodge TV, and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN one week from tonight, 7 o'clock pregame, 715 for the tip. Saturday, January 28th, Beaver Dam girls basketball is at Milton. That's a matinee game. I think that's like maybe a, a 2 o'clock or 2.30. So I'll have to check that one for you. Uh, I don't have the exact time, on, or, or is it a night game? I'm not sure. I don't have the schedule in front of me here, but I know that uh, we're going to have that game for you. And the other one, and it's not on my list yet, but uh, the Beaver Dam girls actually go to Verona on Thursday night to Palace to, <laughs> to, to play a makeup game. And it's uh, we were scheduled to broadcast that game in December before it got postponed. So we'll have to talk to the powers that be, see if we can get down there for that one on Thursday, because that will be a doozy. Uh, after what we saw last night, boy, I tell you, yeah. that should be a good one as well. Well, and I, I feel bad for the next team that the girls play. Uh, they're going to be out for some revenge and prove that uh, they're ready to go. And, and by the way, talk, speaking of bandwagons, boys hockey is on fire right now. Um, so tune in to see them. They've got two huge games coming up. If, if they close out, they win those, those last two games. They're, we're putting numbers up on the banners over, over at the Family Center. So hopefully they can take care of business. Uh, and Boys Hoops, Boys Hoops is getting going. You know, they got a young team too, and uh, they're starting to open things up a little bit over there. And I know Coach Ladrin's happy with, with wor- their progression. So we got a little bit of momentum going. By the way, I, I need to note too, if you if you don't have anything going on Monday and you're lo- Monday and Tuesday of this coming week and, and you're looking for something to do, stop on down to the high school. We've got the string fling here Monday night here right in the field house, and then the parade of bands uh, on Tuesday. I think we have the hardest working band in the conference. Uh, we've got a f- tremendous uh, group of, of coaches and, and teachers that. Uh, put in endless amounts of time. Uh, our band director, Colin Galitz, uh, orchestra, Kyle Hendrickson, they're, they're going to have their kids ready to go for those things. So stop on out Monday or Tuesday if, if uh, you're looking for something fun to do and, and see some tremendous uh, uh, music work by our, our, our students. I, I played in the band all through high school. Yeah, we're going to have to follow up with Wade Bates. Uh, you said, you, you know, you got your trombone, he's got the accordion, let's see what happens. Uh, I, I think he has an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say he had one. <laughs> well, maybe but, he'll be learning this week. Well, I, <laughs> there's no time like the present, is there? <laughs> there's no time like the present. Oh, uh, my goodness. Ryan Gerber, thank you so much. Uh, excellent job here on the uh, call tonight. Uh, great to have you with us. I, I'm sure we'll do this again down the road. This is a lot of fun. I'll, I'll keep coming back as long as you keep having me. And well, uh, definitely, that's not going to be an issue at all. <laughs> so thank you, Ryan, for, uh, for being here tonight. Uh, Justin Wilski, thank you, sir, as always, the Ninja, our videographer and engineer. And we also thank, of course, our sponsors that make this possible. Uh, our presenting video sponsors are Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's match, also a presentation of John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. 49-28, to 28, your final in the dual meet tonight. Beaver Dam, a winner over Stoughton. And that's going to wrap it up for the Ninja, Justin Milski, and BDHS Athletic Director Ryan Gerber. My name is Mike Tronson saying so long. Have a pleasant evening and enjoy your weekend. This has been a Daily Dodge TV Sports presentation. Good night, everybody. You're watching.